Elementary matrices is one of my favorite subjects, and they have tremendous applications in linear algebra. And if you like thinking of matrix products as actions, then you will really enjoy elementary matrices too, because they're all about actions. But they're about simplest actions. You may even call those actions elementary. We'll discuss those actions that elementary matrices impart on other matrices in a matrix product in the next video. In this video, I would like to introduce you to the concept of elementary matrices, give you a loose definition, and look at a few examples. Now, an elementary matrix is a matrix that's just a handful of row or column operations from the identity. It could be one, it could be a couple, it could be a handful. But as long as they're easy to see, as long as those operations are easy to name, the matrix can be considered elementary. So you will really understand this concept after just a few examples. Let's look at the first one and answer the question, how can this matrix be obtained first by row operations then by column operations? It's always two different perspectives on the same matrix, it has to be elementary from both points of view. So looking at this matrix, what are the row operations that yield this matrix if your starting point is the identity matrix? So first, imagine the identity matrix and then name the operation that you must take in order to convert the identity matrix to this matrix and do it both in terms of rows and in terms of columns. Don't mix the two, only stick to the rows and then stick to the columns. So for this matrix, taking the row perspective first, you have to add two of row one to row two. So this matrix is elementary. Now from the columns point of view, once again, we imagine the identity matrix and then ask ourselves, what column operation would yield this matrix? And the column operation is add two of column two to column one. So yes, this matrix is elementary from both points of view. This is probably one of the simplest possible elementary matrices and one that just screams single row or column operation. Here's another one like that. Start mentally with the identity and then answer the question of what you need to do first in terms of rows, then in terms of columns to get this matrix. And the answer is from the row perspective, add, excuse me, subtract seven of row two from row three. There we go. Now let's take a look at the same matrix from the columns perspective. And the operation starting with the identity matrix is to subtract three, excuse me, subtract three of columns three, subtract seven of column three from column two. And we're done analyzing this matrix. Let's take a look at this one. This one will be an entirely different operation. So imagine the identity and then pick the right row operation that would deliver this matrix. And that row operation is of course multiply row two by the number three. And there you go. Uh, perhaps this is even more elementary than this because the row operation is easier. Now from the point of view of columns, the column operation is multiply column two by three. So there we go, a very interesting elementary matrix. All right, let's move on to slightly more complicated elementary matrix, but matrices, but still elementary because the operations that you need to carry out are still very easy to identify. So looking at this matrix, let's first take the row perspective. So you once again mentally start with the identity and name the operations that will yield this matrix. And those operations are add two of row one to row two. And the second operation is add three of row one to row three. And this is maybe a good opportunity to say you must stick to full row operations. You can't just say start with identity, then put a two here and put a three here. Now surely that would yield this matrix, but that's outside of the rules of the game. The rules of the game are stick to row operations, to the three row operations. So you must say add row one to row two, 
and twice row one to row two, and three times row one to row three. Now let's switch to the columns perspective. The rules are the same except with respect to columns operations. And the columns operations are add two of column two to column one, and then add three of column three to column one. All right, and do you see how it's very different when you look at this from the point of view of columns compared to rows. When we were looking at this matrix from the point of view of rows, we would add two of row one and then three of row one. So row one was used in both operations. But when we're looking at it from the point of view of columns, we used column two and then we used column three. So the column and row perspectives seem very much related here, but very different here. And that's more the rule than the exception. Okay, moving on to this matrix. This matrix is easier, is not easier, more interesting because it's two operations away from the identity. But what those operations are depends on the order in which you choose to do them. Wasn't the case in this matrix. It didn't matter whether you added two of column two to column one and then three of column three to column one, or if you did those operations in reverse order. It did not matter. In this matrix, it will matter. So from the row's point of view, let me do it in two operations in two different ways. And you'll see that, that not only the operations switch, they don't, they're different operations. So let's take a look. Here's one way to do it. Multiply row two by three. Now we have a three here. Add row two to row three. Did you see that? So again, mentally start with the identity matrix. Now to get this three, multiply row two by three. Now we have a three sitting here. So all of these row operations are sitting on top of each other. They accumulate, they're com the combined effect. So then the second operation, once we have a three here, is add row two to row three. Now let's do it in the opposite order. Let's get this three first, and then worry about turning what was once a one into a three. Then the operations are add three of row two to row three, and then multiply row two by three. So depending on the order, the operations are actually different. Let's take a look at this from the point of view of columns. And once again, there'll be a difference depending on whether you want to get this three first or this three first. So let's see. One way to do it is multiply column two by three. Again, I skip the step of visualizing the identity matrix, but that's what I'm doing. I visualize the identity matrix. So I have one, 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 and nothing else. So to get this three, I'm multiplying column three, excuse me, column two by three. That gives me this three. And then I'm adding three of column three to column two, and that delivers this three. Uh, so two different orders, two diff Okay, now let's do it in the other order. Lost track a little bit. So if we want to get this three first, you have to be a little, a little careful, because if you say add three of column three to column two, now you have a three sitting here. So when you convert this one into a three by multiplying the entire column by three, this three will become a nine. And that's not what you want. So elementary matrices are beginning to take a little bit of ingenuity, which is exactly what we're looking for. We want our tasks to be interesting, and elementary matrices make for very interesting exercises. All right, so the right operation would be add one of column three to column two. Now we have one, one. Right? We're planning for that multiplication by three. And now multiply the entire column by three, and you get the two threes. Fantastic. All right, the same point here. Let's take a look at this from the point of view of rows and then columns. And in this matrix, we have to be really careful. Here is how you accomplish this matrix, obtain this matrix from the identity by row operations. Step number one, add row two to row three. That puts the one here. Operation number two, add row one to row two. That puts a one here and we're done. Now you could not have done it in the opposite order. That's the thing to be careful about. If you name those operations, 
in the opposite order, you would get something altogether different. Let's see. Getting this one first, add row 1 to row 2. Very good. Puts a 1 here. Then to get this one, you would say add row 2 to row 3. But remember, by that time, there is already a 1 sitting here, so that would put a 1 in this location, and you are not getting the matrix you were hoping to get. So the order is very important. So if you went this route, you would have to do an additional operation, which is subtracting row 1 from row 3 to get rid of this 1. You can do it that way, perfectly valid, not the easier of the two options, but you have to pay very close attention to the order of your operations. Let's take a look at this matrix from the column point of view. And again, the easy thing to do would be to add column 3 to column 2, but getting a 1 in here. Oh, I'm doing it the wrong way, right? So here's the right way to do it. Add, again, visualize the identity. Here's the right order. Add column 2 to column 1, that gives us this 1. And then add column 3 to column 2, and that gives us this 1. And we're done. Had I done it in the order that I was beginning to say, adding column 3 to column 2 first would put this 1 here. And then adding column 2 to column 1 would have put another 1 in the same location. And that would have required a third operation to get rid of this 1. So again, either 1 is fine, but the first way, the first way that actually worked is actually the, the better way, I would say. So the takeaway from this matrix is pay attention to the order of the operation. The takeaway from this matrix is that, yes, you have to pay, the, pay attention to the order of the operations, but you have plenty of good choices. And here, you have to be careful. Okay, moving on to this matrix, not overly challenging. So let's do it from the row perspective first. Again, the order will matter very much. So the first row operation is add row one to row two. Once again, I'm visualizing the identity. That's the definition of an elementary matrix. It's a few row operations away from the identity. So any discussion of an elementary matrix starts with the identity. If you skip this simple step, it will be very confusing. Because when I say then add row 1 to row 2, thinking that this matrix is the starting point, you will be very confused because you would expect to see a 2 here, or maybe now a 3. Right? That's not the game we're playing. The game we're playing is start with the identity and then perform row operations and then column operations on the identity to get this matrix. So starting with the identity to get this 1, add row 1 to row 2, and then multiply row 1 by 2 to get this 2. And don't do those operations in the opposite order because then you would end up with a 2 here. So be careful. Columns. So to get this 2, multiply column 1 by 2, and then add column 2 to column 1 to place a 1 here. Once again, don't do it in the opposite order. If you do it in the opposite order and you end up with a 1 here before you did the multiplication by 2, you will end up with a 2, 2, and that's not what you want. All right, here is the most involved one of them all. Uh, let's see how, would, how we're going to go about this. So from the row perspective, start with the identity. Multiply row 3 by 2. Now we have a 2 here. Add row 3 to row 1. Great, now we have a 2 here. Add row 3 to row 2. Now we have a 1, 2 here. And then multiply row 2 by 2, and that gives you 2, 4. So this makes, as far as I'm concerned, for an enjoyable puzzle. And it's also very good to be able to do all of those operations in your head. Develops your mental RAM and also helps you understand matrices better. Two good benefits. Okay, now let's do it from the column point, columns point of view. So I think from the columns point of view, it's a little easier. It would be multiply column 3 by 2. Now we have a 2 here. Add 4 of column 2 to column 3, gives us this 4. Add 2 of column 1 to column 3, gives us this 2. And then multiply column 2 by 2, which gives us this 2. You could have done it in another order. Now that there are, I think there are four operations here. 
So with four operations, there's probably a number of different ways in which you could do it. So I did it in the way that I thought was the easiest. You might come up with your own way, which might be just as good or better. Okay, so the one operation that has not been featured here yet, and it's because we've seen it before, is switching columns. If you think back to this matrix, let's see, where can I put it? I will erase this matrix and write back this familiar matrix. I'm doing this matrix because even though we've seen it before, I would like to all three column and row operations to be represented. So this is also an elementary matrix. That's in the way you obtain it from the identity. Let's go for the row perspective first. Is switch rows one and two. That's really the only way to do it. And from the columns perspective, it's switch columns one and two. So this matrix is also an elementary matrix and all row and column operations have been featured in this list of eight, nine matrices. Now, this one that I left out from the discussion is actually not an elementary matrix. Uh, whether something is an elementary matrix is partly subjective, but I look at this and things begin mixing because we have things both in the lower triangular part and the upper triangular part, right, which none of these other matrices did except this one because it involved switching. Right? Things would actually start mixing. And if I start with the identity and I add two of row one to row two to get me this two, it would then not be easy to get this two. And things would become a lot more involved. So as far as I'm concerned, this matrix is not elementary. So let me cross it out of all the matrices on the board. This one, even though it's simpler looking than this matrix, is actually not elementary in my book. Now, that's my introduction to elementary matrices. Now let's discover what actions these elementary matrices impose on other matrices in a matrix product.